And I remember the first time I heard that song, I, for some reason, I focused on the cowbell and I immediately thought, what's that guy's life like? <laughs> I got my GED and then my cat ate it. Um, and I have that framed on my wall. And I'll never make a leap that big again. Like I went from substitute teacher to Broadway composer. My goal with my show is always to de-gaslight a nation. Was well, this funny or is it sad? I'm like, it's both, like life. And they're like, well, do you want the audience to cry or laugh? I'm like, both. I want them to be like laughing as they're sobbing. I always felt that the responsibility I had was to, if the person who was the guest was not entertaining, I had to fix it. There's just a difference culturally between being funny at school with a bunch of kids who speak English and then going home to your parents who are like, who grew up in communist China. I didn't feel like I fit in. And then I walked into the comedy store and I was like a bunch of weird degenerates. I was like, this feels right. I yeah. feel at home. It is very funny to drop extremely personal bombs on people in what yeah. otherwise is kind of an upbeat, uh, don't you love entertainment tone. There's two kind of buckets. There's stuff that's just like, objectively funny and then there's stuff that's meaningful and sometimes comedy can be both of those things and by the way i love both buckets people say you were so brave the brave was was getting out of bed and walking my dogs that that was really hard i really feel like something at the core of comedy that can really help us know each other just because somebody's famous doesn't mean they have their shit together